Well, how's it going? I'm Mark Duffy. Welcome to my channel. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about the magic that is layer masks in Photoshop. Yeah! Dude! Dude! I told you. At the end sorry, of the video. Sorry. Layer masks. Let's get into this. So in this first example of this car show, I'm gonna superimpose a toy car photo I did of a BMW on top of this. But before I start using layer masks, I just wanna briefly talk about smart objects and non-destructive editing. So I'm gonna make a duplicate of this with Control J. And on the bottom one, I'm gonna right click and convert to smart object. Now the reason why we do this, especially for scaling, is the smart object actually re references the original image and you're never actually editing it. So if we just hit enter on this on the scale, double click onto the top layer, it's gonna go into the styling options. But if we double click the thumbnail of the smart object, it actually opens up the original image. And if we just check the size of the image, you'll see that it's set at 1920, the original size. So close that PSB file then, and it's actually scaled this back up again, because once you scale down, it consolidates that, and what was 1920 pixels is no longer, but this is probably not gonna show enough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scale all the way down to like the size of a stamp, and then I'm gonna bring it back up again and show you exactly what happens. Now, if we scale this back up again, then you're gonna see a dramatic change. Look at that, the image is completely pixelated and is ruined. Or if we look at the smart object, it's absolutely perfect. And that's because it's actually not editing the image, it's only referencing the image. It's a preview, it's a nested layer. It's a complete non-destructive way of editing and it's the way I would much prefer that you edit your photos. So with that said, let's start working on layer masks and let's make this image somewhat work into this photo, even though it's the wrong perspective. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to actually place inside the free parking space you see in the bottom right hand. So once we get it in place, we'll start using the layer mask. So what you wanna do is go to the bottom right hand panel and you see the square with the black circle. Select that, that is your layer mask. Now the layer mask is like a smart object in the fact that it's a non-destructive way of editing. Instead of using an eraser tool, all you're actually doing is just making it transparent. So if I use a hard brush here and just start drawing across it, you'll see what, happened, what I mean. So I'm using a black brush right now to conceal. Black conceals, white reveals. And now we can start seeing the image in the back. What if I draw my name? Yeah, pretty cool, I can draw my name because we're literally seeing what's behind this layer. If we all click on the thumbnail for the layer mask, we can actually see what we've drawn on this layer mask. So we literally just use black on the white and because it's a layer mask, it just, whatever is, whatever's painted black is transparent and whatever is white is visible. So if we actually just bring this back and undo it, I'm gonna draw a square right now and just delete the square out of this image basically. So we get the rectangle, shift F5 to fill, make sure it's set to black, and that's gonna conceal everything in that box. And you can see now, if that was a profile photo or something out there, that could be perfect for what you need. We can also change it, we can select maybe a circle. And we fill that with black, shift F5. And if we delete this layer mask, you'll see that the image is still there perfect because we haven't deleted the image, we've just made a section transparent. And that's all you're doing. So now if we go up to the lasso polygonal tool, I'm actually going to make a selection of this car and have it the only part of this image that's visible is the car. So once you've got your selection, shift F5 and hit black. We've made the car disappear, but if you use control I, you can invert the mask and boom. So that means what was black is now white and what was white is black. Basically, the car is now the only thing that's white, everything else is black, so the only thing that's visible is the car. And we can we can change the scale of this and we can really put it into that parking slot and make it suit. Now, I would suggest, again, if you are going to be using layer masks and you are going to be resizing down to convert your whole layer mask and all into a, a smart object, again, to retain your scaling. But that's just another way for being smart with your edits. In this next example is a promo I did for my book. I only had two sample books to work with and I wanted multiples for my promo. So I took one photo like this and another photo with the books piled up on top of each other. And you can see here, I'm actually painting that in. So how I'm doing that is I have that layer with a black layer mask and I've set a white brush and I'm only painting in the section that I need. So as you can see, the books on there appearing. So there you have, we had two books and they become three books. So I also took a darker exposure 
uh, for the sky to control the sky. And so this is more kind of this is a quick way of showing um, exposure blending. So if I delete this mask and show you what I did, I'm just going to put a normal mask on, and I'm going to use a black brush, big black brush, to delete the foreground. So to make the foreground transparent, just paint it black on your white layer mask, and look at that. Who needs a gradient filter when you can understand layer masking? This is why I don't own gradient filters because I just took two photos really quickly on a bracket mode. And if we actually all click onto the one with the, the pile of books, you can see that white section is all that book is. And then the other section is just the sky. So again, white reveals, black conceals. Even on the thumbnail that I did for this video, I use layer masks and they're quite simple in these ones. So if I shift click, you'll see the difference without the layer mask. So there's the bass guitar one and there's the drumming one. And then if we just actually just show you now is by um, all clicking on these layer masks, I'll show you what the layer mask looks like. So, you know, it's nothing special. There's nothing fantastic about it. The lighting is very similar from one photo to the next. So it's easy to, uh, to mix and match in layers like this here. And with these here, I'm gonna start with a black mask because I only wanna paint in the drum section or the bass section. So if we did a normal mask, the pain with that is you have to paint in all the sections that you don't really need. So here we're using a black brush and I'm actually painting out the bottom of the image. And that doesn't make any sense, it's too laborsome. So do it the other way. Alt click on the icon and it introduces a black layer mask. So all you have to do now is painting the drum section. This is a much quicker and easier way. And if you plan ahead with your layer mask, it means that your workflow will be much quicker. So then if I flip the brush to black, I can delete the sections I don't need off this. So then I can clean up my selections. So just clean up the top then as well. And you see now I put a fade on the drumstick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the brush back to white again, zoom in a bit, and I'm actually gonna put that 100% in. And like I said, it's quite simple. You know, there's nothing spectacular happening in something like this. The lighting is so similar and stuff like that. It's really easy to actually blend these in together. So same again with the base layer. Alt select on the layer mask. It will disappear because it's been painted black. So we now paint in white where we want it to be. And look at that. Really, really quickly, we almost have the, the image finished. If you use the backspace button like you would do in Lightroom, you can actually have a layer mask overlay and you can actually see the image underneath and how your layer mask is affecting it. So everything that's red is what's transparent. And for around the pen, I'm gonna use the, la the polygonal lasso tool just to make sure I have a definite edge because that pen is sharp, so. Uh, in other parts of the photo, it's a little bit blurred, so the brush does work great, but this is really good. And then there's Shift F5 to fill. And if you're not sure which to use, white or black, just test it. So test black, if it doesn't work, undo, and then use white. So here you go, if we use black, that's what would have done. It would have, it would have hid that layer. We wanted white to reveal it. In this next example, I'm gonna show you uh, how to make a selection and then use your layer mask. So this is another way you can do it. So here you have a photo of my eyeball and the, a vector of some smash glass. So I wanna select that area in the middle where the eyeball will be uh, visible. So I use the polygonal tool. You can use whatever you want for selecting. Some people like to use the pen tool. It's not really for me. So you've noticed here is I haven't actually selected the layer mask yet because when you use a selection, and then click the layer mask, it automatically only shows what's in the selection. So this can be really quick. So we, so we just hide the glass, you can see the selection, select the layer mask, boom. It's the only thing of the eye photo that is now visible. And that looks pretty good as well. But to add to the effect, we're gonna use the uh, vector of the cracked glass. Now I don't want all of this, so I only want it to affect the circle around the glass. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use guidelines, first of all, to show me where the circle of the, the actual lens is. Then I'm gonna use the circular marquee tool and then just select. So there's a quick selection. So bring your layer back on, select layer mask, and there it is. It's all, we're almost done. We just have to refine the eye. So we've gone out of the circular edge for the eye because we didn't know it was there. So what we can do is a really cool trick is control click the layer mask of the cracked glass with the circle marquee tool. So we just control click that 
Now we have a selection. Now if we were to paint that, we would, we would be able to paint out the eye, but we want to go around it. So if we control shift I to reverse the selection, now everything outside, outside the circle is fair game and we can delete it. So if we brush in, there you go, it's deleted. Now if I undo that, so this is what I mean now, right? The selection is now only inside the eye. I'm now deleting the photo of the eye. That's not what I want. So undo that and you want to go control shift I to reverse the selection and everything outside the circle is now deletable and now we've now we've we've hidden it and that is really good now look at that that looks so good the only thing we need to do now is maybe put in a little bit of a shadow on the eye just to make it look like it's in behind the lens of so the only uh, only light coming in and you don't have to do this but this would just finish it off so i'm going to create a new layer in here in between the eye and the crack and i'm going to get a big black brush and i'm going to paint around nice and soft so just paint around that side there to create the shadow that looks good but it's all over the lens what do we do if you hover your mouse between that layer and the eye layer and hold alt you'll see an arrow and you'll clip it to that layer that layer that shadow is now part of that eye so whatever happens if you turn that layer on and off it'll turn off the shadow layer as well at the same time so now it's clipped onto it and it is subject to your layer mask in this example, I'm briefly showing you about exposure blending in landscape photography. I'm not going to do a full breakdown as I already have a full video on it. So if you want to check that out, I'll leave the link above. But you can see here, I have three different exposures an underexposed and overexposed and then a properly exposed. So I'm going to take one of the exposures right now and just show you how I would actually use a layer mask to blend it in. So I'm going to take the medium mid-tones one, delete that layer mask. And you can just see the first thing you need to do is a selection. I'm using the quick selection tool. Again, like I said, in the exposure blending video I have, and I'm linking above, I go into better detail as to how to use this. So use the quick selection tool, get your uh, guide layer, make a selection, make a layer mask, and just paint it in. So here you, you're going to be doing like a dodging and burning effect. Uh, and for me, it's the cleanest way of doing dodging and burning is exposure blending. Layer masks are not just for exposure bending. What In this headshot of my twin brother, what if we wanted to change the color of his tie to red? We go up to adjustments, hue and saturation, select colorize, and now we can change the color, but it's gonna affect the whole image. So let's get the color first. We wanna get a red tie. So we're just gonna pump this up until we get a nice, so we're only looking at the tie right now for the color. So we're gonna first set the color and then we're gonna put a layer mask on it because as you can see on this adjustment layer, there is a layer mask available for it. So all we need to do now is make a selection of the tie and just to please everyone, I'm going to use a pen tool. Again, I'm not the biggest fan of it, especially for this, there's a little bit of blurring around the tie and stuff. So once you have your selection, hit okay. Now, if you use Shift F5 straight away and fill black, you're going to mask out your tie. So what we want to do is we want to flip the selection. So Control Shift I and then Shift F5. And there we have the tie only affected in our hue saturation layer. And like I said about the pen tool, um, this is a headshot, so it's not full front to back, you know, depth of field, there's a little bit of blurring. So I'm gonna use the brush just to refine the edge on that there. And then if, you, if you're not happy with the red, you can always change the color afterwards. So we can go green, blue, purple, pink, any color that you think is gonna suit this right now. Another way you can use layer masks is to hide text. So say we wanna hide the text behind the buildings for that 3D effect. I'm going to use the quick selection tool here. Now, really and truly, if I was doing this with a photo, I would be using a silhouetted um, scene of the buildings just to get a good selection, but I'll just refine it afterwards. So get the selection, shift F5 on your layer mask, boom, there you go. The buildings are behind. Now, like I said, if this had been a proper selection from the get-go, well, I wouldn't have to do all this fine tuning, but we'll just fine tune it right now. And that's the great thing about layer masks. You can paint and paint and paint and paint and paint. You know, just get your brush tool, get whatever you need. Just remember, Black conceals, white reveals. So if you need to hide something, you paint it black. If you need to reveal something, if you need to show something, you paint it white. And once you get that in your head, you know, just so much stuff you can do. I'm gonna use the polygonal tool here just to refine the edge there, make sure that that W and the, and the O and the R are right behind the buildings. And even here, I didn't actually hide all of the O. I hid part of it to make it look like the O was actually wrapping around one building. So that gives an extra perspective on it as well. 
Now, as I'm slagging the selection here, it's actually giving me a good idea. This sh that looks like a shadow that's on the yard, so let's actually add a shadow to this. So I'm going to add an extra layer on top of the text layer, and I'm going to clip it to the text layer again. So we'll just control click between the two layers to clip them together, and we're going to paint in a little bit of a black section here. So just, I I'd say get the brush the width of the building. There you go. Nice and subtle width of the building. Doesn't have to be too strong. The people always over strengthen shadows when it comes to drop shadows and stuff like this here. Subtlety is your friend. And even at that, I think that's a little bit strong. So I'm gonna bring the transparency down again. So there you have it, the most vital tool in the arsenal in Photoshop, layer masks. And if you can get your head around layer masks, you really can get a handle on basically everything thereafter. In the 10 years I've worked as a graphic designer, I would say, there's probably no, there's no design that I've ever done that layer masks weren't used. It's that vital. So hope you enjoyed this. Hope you got something from this. Feel free to check me out on Instagram and all the good things, the social media. And you know what? We promised them that we'd let him play the drums. So do you want to play now? Let's hear him play. He wants to play a song. I'll see you in the next one.